What's going on guys? Welcome back to the Honeystead. I know I have not been putting out <laughs> as many videos um, as what I normally do, but there has been a good reason why. And if you caught back in October, um, one of my videos that I shared, uh, I shared with you guys that I was working on a pretty, <laughs> pretty extensive project uh, that has taken up a lot of my a lot of my time um, but today is the day and it is official the online home apothecary course is launching that Jill and I from Whispering Willow Farms her and I've been working on this course since October we have been pretty much doing this daily and <laughs> checking in with each other doing the editing, working on the PDFs, working on just building out this course on how to how to hopefully simplify this and make it a little easier and more accessible uh, for an individual to get into herbal medicine and help build their home apothecary. So while we're up here, I had to shake out some tinctures and I think I might there might be one or two that we might press off today. There's one that I know that I have been meaning to press off since September, <laughs> which is fine. Don't tell anybody. We're going to go ahead and press off the jewel weed that we set up in a witch hazel. And there is definitely good reason, good reason for jewel weed. Um, if you're interested in learning about jewel weed, I did a whole video on that. So I'll put that, I'll go ahead and tag that video if you want to kind of watch and, and come harvest with me and then learn about why why we set up jewel weed in witch hazel but i figured this would be just a a nice laid back day <laughs> of shaking tinctures <laughs> and checking dates and then figuring out which ones we need to press off which essentially most of them are are due um so we'll we're gonna get started on that but i wanted to talk to you about this home apothecary course and kind of give you give you the inside scoop uh, about what it has and what we what we share check out that that is some calendula from my garden I've got that set up in an oil we're gonna we're gonna make a sap with that but our course goes into detail about the systems of the body as well as understanding the actions of each herb each herb causes an action and starting to familiarize yourself with the actions and pairing it with the herbs and then understanding you know would that be better in a tea would it be better in a tincture should i make a decoction that's where the fun part comes in. So we go into detail about systems of the body, how they work, and then pull in the, the herbal actions that each system may need to help facilitate and support. You know, our body, we are not just one system. We have so many systems of our body, obviously, and they each work together to promote a balanced homeostasis, um, which is balance. That's essentially what it is. Uh, but it's not just about the herbs. It's about lifestyle. It's about, you know, the holistic approach. We, we are a whole. Our body is a whole. And then our life is a whole. And what we do outside um, does kind of play a role. So that in a nutshell is uh kind of what the course is about um i'm excited though i am truly excited this does not have to be as scary you know and and i know that it can be um but genuinely it takes learning one herb at a time and and how can you incorporate that into your life you know i that familiarizing yourself with them you start to truly understand and appreciate and you know just how most of us might have learned you know that uh, in western medicine um if you need an anti-inflammatory what do you take ibuprofen uh, so it's it's kind of just rethinking um rethinking about what an anti-inflammatory is and what are the herbs that offer that you know so that is kind of the way that my brain likes to work <laughs> um and i was definitely excited to be able to 
to partner up with Jill and offer offer this course. There's a lot that I I learned um, about courses and online. You guys know, like I do videos and I'll edit and I'll put them up there, but like there's so much that I don't know. Um, and so it was such a blessing for me to have been able to have that opportunity from Jill to teach me how to how to do this. How do you share this? And I really feel like we complemented each other in this course because we each come from different walks of life. Uh, her holistic journey um, is different than mine, uh, but you know, it's the want. It's that it's that want that she had that she chose. Um, I had a lot of this growing up as a child, but never to this degree. And so I'm even learning my place in this. I'm, I'm even learning my place in this. Um, and so one, I want to thank you guys for being supportive and thank you for being excited. Um, and if you are interested in, in getting into our online course, I will put all of that information down below. We do have uh, a early bird sale going on right now. So today is Friday. I'm going to hurry up and edit this and get this out to you uh, right away because the sale ends uh, Sunday at midnight. Then we also have a VIP section where you're gonna get access to Jill and I in a private group for up to up to six weeks. And then also a swag bag um, with some of our goodies <laughs> that we get to share with you guys. Uh, but the thing that's gonna be nice about this course is we wanted to offer it this time of year. Um, because I know, come spring, psh, I am out there, I am growing things. Um, so this is a nice time of year to be able to just kind of slow down, um, take the course, you'll have access to it for a lifetime and you can take it at your own pace, which I think is gonna be helpful because, you know, I get it. A life sometimes gets really, really busy. Um, and so sometimes having that, having that pace is a little bit easier. And we are limiting the VIP to only 100 people just because I, I want to be able to, you know, I want to I wanna be able to really just kind of hone in and, um, and be more present. But all of that information is going to be down below. But I wanted to give you a quick um, sneak peek on what you're what you're going to be getting
just did some jewelweed back in mid-September. Um, it's this beautiful plant that grows right along our creek side and it is loaded with a substance called saponins. It's a very soapy like substance. Um, so one of the ways that I like to use jewelweed is in spray bottles to go. And it's great for poison ivy, poison oak, poison sumac. Um, I actually have a little bit of a funny story to tell you. The day that I harvested this jewelweed, I guess in the process of me collecting this beautiful plant, I got into a chigger patch and I was tore up <laughs> by chiggers. Um, but if you remember, there was a few different ways that I actually preserved the this plant. So when I set it up in, in witch hazel uh, that I'm gonna use in little spray bottles to go, but I also harvested a good bit of it and I just chopped it up and I put it in my freezer um, so that if I needed it right away, all I had to do was just pull out that plant and break it up and then rub the inner juice that was on that plant on my chigger bites, which is exactly what I did. And let me just tell you, that is a game changer. That was the first time that I ever actually did it like that. I had used jewelweed um, in witch hazel before and it was it was great. So I am excited and if you want to learn more about jewelweed and actually go in depth, there's a whole video. Again, I will make sure that that video is accessible if you guys are interested so that next year um, in August, September timeframe when you see this beautiful little little plant growing on your on your creek side or near water, you'll be able to remember this and then harvest it. Um, but I have been due to actually do this. I actually should have done it like two weeks after I set it up, but let's just face it, sometimes life uh, doesn't happen that way. And so, you know, it's good. There's nothing wrong with it. It is here when I, when I need it. It doesn't smell because it's witch hazel. Um, so I'm gonna do this uh, primarily very simple. Do I want to wear my gloves? No, not yet. I, <laughs> I do have gloves that I'm going to put on mainly because I do have a cut, um, but I'm, I'm going to try to not make a huge mess and go ahead and just pour this, pour the majority of it off. Wow. Look at that color. Oh my gosh. That is so exciting. <laughs> That is the one thing that I love is when we are setting up a tincture, watching all of the properties just completely extract out of it. Look, bloopers and all, you know, I, I don't even need to hide it anymore. But check that out, that was smart. Look what I just did. <laughs> so <laughs> it just fell in the bowl. So not much of a blooper, but you get what I'm trying to say. All right, this is where I'm gonna put my gloves on now just because and I'm sorry if it's going to be crinkly um, I did have other gloves that I really like to wear which were like these biodegradable gloves however I learned that they don't work very well on tinctures um, because they're biodegradable and so when you were to use them they the liquid would actually um, liquid actually would make it break down. So I'm gonna try something a little new. First, look at that. Gosh, that is gorgeous. This makes me excited. I probably should have used a tray instead. All right, if you guys have been following my story for a little while, you guys might have seen or have heard um, that back in, oh, sorry. Back in a couple, many years ago, I sustained an uh, injury on my hand, um, on my dominant hand, which this time of year, um, it starts acting up a little bit because of the cold. So I came across this fancy doohickey. I don't know what the heck it's called. Um, I just came across it and I was like, this might be a game changer for people who have 
trouble um, gripping and squeezing. And I have a cheese press. I know a lot of people ask about my, my big press that I have. I went online to try to get some pricing to see if I could help um, help you guys uh, come up with a, a good deal on something like that. I don't think that's necessary. You know, I mainly use the cheese press that I have when I'm doing like big batches of fire cider, but I am not gonna break that thing out just to press this um, and then have to wash it again. So I found this thing and I did go ahead and put it on, I'm making a mess. I did go ahead and put it on my Amazon storefront because I was like, wow, okay, this might be really cool. So we're going to see if this is going to work. And I feel like I should have gotten a tray. I'm gonna get another bowl <laughs> just, just to have. Look, okay, here we go. All right, let me put this glove back on, even though it's crinkly. But this is what I think we're going to try to do. Think, let's think, how are we gonna, do? oh, I got a better idea. We're gonna do that just in case. If any of the little bits get in your tincture, um, strain it again, you know? It's, it's not gonna hurt, but just strain it again. Okay, let's see, let's see. I hope this works, I don't think. Okay, not as much liquid is coming out as what I was kind of hoping for, but it is working. Yeah, it's working really good. It's just getting all of that little bit, all of that little, let me have a discard ball, all of the little bits out. Okay, that, that comes out. Um, good to know. <laughs> But I am, I am excited about this thing because I do think that as people who might have injuries with their hands like I do, um, if there is a better way to actually do this without hurting or hurting yourself, because I was mainly like squeezing this by, by my hand. Um, they make little presses, but they're just so expensive. I think I spent 18 bucks on this thing and it is working. Um, I just think that it doesn't have as much juice in it as what I was kind of hoping. It's more like celery. Okay, again, this thing comes out. So what I'm thinking about doing is you could probably even save all of this plant matter and put it back in the freezer, use it, or if you, you know, need to use it like a, like a poultice. Okay, that's actually working, working not so bad. So what I'm thinking with that extra plant material, I could probably put that in the freezer. I was actually thinking about taking it and blending it up with my immersion blender and then kind of turning it into, uh, like putting it in ice cube trays so that um, I can have them ready to go for if I get, you know, if I get chiggers, it's cold, it's witch hazel, how amazing is that? I don't think I'm gonna waste that. So I might go ahead and take that back to the house and use my immersion blender, make like a paste with it, possibly, you know, pour a little bit of the witch hazel back into it, um, and then put it in the freezer in little ice cube trays so that when I, when I need it, um, I can just pop one out and it's ready to go. I need a, I need a tray. I'm gonna make a mess. <laughs> Good enough, we're gonna use a plate. So now, because I like to go out and I forage and I am all over the place in the woods, um, I wanted to go ahead and make a few uh, in spray bottles for ready to go. I ordered these, um, they are plastic, not glass. I was hoping for glass, but we're gonna just use it because I have it. And next time I'll be a little bit better on going ahead and ordering. I am making a massive mess. This is why 
We use a tray. But I also am not afraid to share with you guys my messes because here's the thing. We are, <laughs> we are human. We make messes and life is not all pretty always. We, we make it, we make it as pretty as what we want to make it. Um, so, oh my gosh, I'm, I just, I, this is it. Um, if I make a big, this plate's clean. Just gonna let you know. Cause I might try to salvage a couple of drops. Look, all right, let's do this. Oh, no, not gonna work. There we go. There we go. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, but these are going to be great for on the go. Um, for when I'm out in the woods. You can actually pre-spray yourself with this too. Um, which is what I plan on doing. Especially when I am out foraging for something that is in the poison ivy patch. Because most of the times that's, you know, where I'm at. But what I think is absolutely amazing about jewelweed uh, and, you know, these plants that are here is they typically grow where poison ivy grows. So most of the time, <laughs> the plants that are the solution um, for the culprit is right next to, right next to the plant that's going to cause the problem. Um, so these little guys, I think, are going to be perfect. Now I have two cups. I'm going to save that big bottle and I'm going to grab one of my smaller bottles. I was trying to guesstimate and see, but, uh, but I think that being that I ended up making four spray bottles to go for my, for my family. Now I can go ahead and just do, just do this size. This is gorgeous. This is so pretty. All right. Yeah. Love it. Absolutely love it. I'm gonna go ahead and wipe all of these off so that I can put my label on it because if I don't do that, you know what's gonna happen. I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna be like, what is this again? <laughs> I have to open it and smell it and spray it on myself and be like, oh, okay, I know what that is. Uh, but it doesn't have a bad smell to it. I'm gonna keep it just as it is. I'm sure that if you wanted to play around with some essential oils, you could probably put, um, I'd put lavender in it. Uh, but I, I don't mind the smell. I mean, it's very witch hazel like, but uh, yeah, I've been meaning to do this and of course take you guys along with me in the process. And if you're interested in taking our online home apothecary course, I will put all of that information down below. Bear in mind, the early bird sale is from today all the way until Sunday. So it is a limited time, but um, I'm excited. I'm excited to have learned how to do courses. I'm excited to take you guys and share with you. I can't wait. There are so many more things that, that I wanna share. So as always, don't be afraid to get your hands dirty and learn something old. Bye guys.